yamma, keep it cool, yamma, wine yamma, wine yamma, keep it cool, yamma. Hey, lovely people! Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have another tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how to sew your own wig from start to finish. So if you would like to learn how to make your own wig, then please keep watching. The products you will need to, to achieve this hairstyle is a mannequin head to start off. You will need some string you can get from the beauty supply. You will also need a needle, a couple would help. You need some scissors. You also need bundles and a closure. They are both freshly washed and air dried. So the hair that I'm going to be using today is from Sunbur Hair. I believe I ordered three bundles of 16 inches with the 16 inch closure. I also have a brown wig cap. I prefer these wig caps because they're more breathable. And I also use safety pins to secure the wig cap onto the mannequin head. When you put safety pins on each side of the wig cap, it ensures that while you are sewing the hair, it will not move out of place. I also ensure that it's in line with the actual face of the mannequin. My mannequin actually has a face, so I make sure the back is aligned to the back of the head and the front is aligned to the front of the mannequin head as well. Once all the groundwork is done, then you can get ready to start sewing. So whether it's a closure or a frontal wig, I always sew that first on my mannequin head. So the good thing about this wig cap is it already has it laid out for you. So I'm gonna line up my closure with where the closure is supposed to go on the wig cap and then I'm going to begin sewing that first. Once the closure is aligned, I'm going to pin each end and the back of the closure onto the wig cap so that it does not move while I'm sewing it onto the cap. Then I just do a rough braid on the closure or you can do a ponytail or a bun, anything to keep it from getting in the way while you're sewing it onto the cap. Then you take your needle and you put the thread through. It's up to you how long you want your thread to be. The more you do this, the more comfortable you will get with having longer thread, which lasts longer while you're doing the hair. You will loop it at the end, do it once or twice. If you do have excess while you loop it, just cut it off at the end with some scissors so that it doesn't stick out in your wig. To begin, remove the first safety pin. And then you're going to loop the needle through the wig cap and through the edge of the closure. And before you pull it out completely, you're going to loop it through the string and then you're gonna pull. So it's gonna create a knot. This is really important or else it's just gonna go right through. I like to go over the first spot a second time. Before the needle comes out completely, I will use the string to wrap it around the needle two to three times before I pull. That creates another knot. After I've done those two initial steps, then I'm comfortable enough to continue just sewing on regularly. The regular method that I use to sew is I loop the string around the needle once and I pull out. And that's the fast way that I'm able to do it, but still make sure that the hair is secured on the cap. As you can see, I'm putting the safety pin back in that corner because it has been sewn. And now I don't want the hair to move as I'm working through to the other side. When I am sewing a closure, I like to sew one side at a time. I don't like sewing all at once. Doing each side separately helps prevent error and it also decreases the chances of having an uneven frontal or closure. Before I cut the string and move to the other side, I make sure I loop the string around the needle to create some knots about two to three times so that it's secure and will not move once it's cut. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did on the left side to the right side. So I'm just gonna give my visual learners that like the peace and quiet a chance to just watch, learn, and just vibe with the music.
The closure is finally sewed on and secured to the wig cap and now we can finally move on to the rest of the head. Now before we continue with this tutorial, I'm just going to give you a second to please subscribe to your girl's channel. Just click my name at the bottom right corner because this voiceover tutorial life is not easy at all. I can't even lie to you. So please help your girl out and hit the subscribe button. Back to our regular scheduled program. Now you saw me struggling a second ago with the needle because whenever I'm sewing the first track, I always put the needle through the weft, not under the weft. I do this because I'm laying the foundation. So I always want the very first knot to be very secure. After the first knot is sewn, I follow the exact same sewing process that I did with the closure. The second time, I knot the string around the needle two to three times to secure it once again in the same spot. From then on, I begin sewing under the wefts, not through them. If you look, you will notice that the adjustable straps are hanging on the side of the wig cap. I did remove them to ensure that while I'm sewing the hair to the cap, I wouldn't mistakenly sew the adjustable straps as well. I also doubled the wefts for the back of the hair, and then when I got to the top of the hair, then I did single wefts because I wanted the top to be flat. This all depends on how much bundles you have, then you can determine when you should double it up and when you should make it one. As you can see, I am done sewing my first row onto the wig cap. I do not cut the wefts, I fold it. And I do this simply because it decreases shedding. I'm just going to continue following the same steps until we get to the top of the head. As we get closer to the closure, as you can see, the parting space has decreased. So I have stopped doubling the wefts because I do not want the top to be bulky.
we are finally on the last track. Whenever I'm sewing the final track, I make sure I connect the weft onto the edge of the closure to seal it. That ensures there are no gaps in between. And then we are done. Now that the hard part is done, you can style your wig however you would like. You can do a middle part, a side part. For me, I wanted to try bangs with this hair, a messy bang. I've been seeing it lately and I wanted to see if this look would suit me. So that's what I went for. So right now I'm just sectioning off my hair to determine how thick I want my bangs to be. After that, I'm just taking my hot comb to flatten out the rest of the closure and also to define the bangs. I'm going to use the twisting technique to cut my bangs because I do like the shape that provides. To finish styling this wig, I will have to put it on my head. So if you want to see how I style this wig from start to finish, please stay tuned for part two of the video. I will leave the link in the description box. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope it was informative for you. See you in my next one. Bye.